Welcome to 318 Legends, where we have conversations with local athletes from the 318 area code who have gone on to play sports at the next level. And today, our guest is a 2003 graduate of Washtenaw High School. She went on to play college basketball at Middle Tennessee State, where she was also the third round pick in the 2007 WNBA draft by the Phoenix Mercury, where she would then went on to play uh, professional basketball overseas. Our guest today is Chrissy Givens. Chrissy, how are you doing today? Hello, everybody. <laughs> For anyone that's watching, they may not know who you are. You just want to share a little bit about yourself, maybe what you're doing now. Uh, currently, I am the head coach at Washington Parish High School, so it's almost like full circle. Get to come back home. Um, and basically just trying to pass on the knowledge to girls that have dreams and aspirations of allowing or taking basketball and doing the things that uh, I was able to do and just have some of the most beautiful experiences that I've had in playing the sport. Yeah, that's awesome. One thing that we've definitely seen through our first five to seven interviews is the amount of people who've made it at the next level who have that passion to help the next generation come up and make it there. And so we thank you for for serving and being a coach in the area and coming back home. So like we said, you were now at Washtenaw. You graduated from Washtenaw. Um, give us a little bit of some of your favorite memories, moments playing at Washtenaw High School. Um. Well, my crew that I came with uh, in high school, we had known each other since we were eight years old. We played bitty ball together. Uh, we played AU together. And it was so hard for me to think about what's my favorite memory because, I mean, we have so many uh, memories. But uh, one funny non-basketball, and most of the memories came actually outside of the court because, you know, you get to know these girls and we become sisters and we're always together. Like even off the court, we're together. Either we're doing our homework or we're just on the phone on three-way. When we used to talk on the phone, you know, on three-way, we're just on the phone. So some of my memories are are off the court, but one that was just, and I called my teammate, I called my friend, I said, do you remember this? And we cracked up laughing. So uh, we were senior year, we were on our way to the state tournament and uh, Coach Mitchell uh, wanted to stop. And he was like, well, where y'all want to stop? I'm not a big yogurt person. So one of my teammates decided to scream out TCBY. And I was just like, oh, like who eats yogurt? Like, I don't want to eat yogurt, but everybody voted for TCBY. And I was angry. I was about the only one who didn't want to eat TCBY. And so they saw my face and they started chanting TCBY, TCBY. And so they made this chant, put the little stomp to it and everything. We pulled up to a gas station. CCBY was close. And I let them have it. When I tell you for about two days straight, I sung CCBY. And I was just extremely, extremely petty um, singing this chant for them. But they were so angry. But that's off the court. Um, on the court, I think my favorite memory, uh, back when the district was West Washita, Neville, Ruston, West Monroe, and Washita, it ended up being a four-way tie for the district title. And we had to go to West Washtenaw to play it because West, uh, West Washtenaw wasn't in, in the tie. So it was Neville, Ruston, Washtenaw, and West Monroe. And we're playing in the district tournament. And we had the youngest team. We were playing four sophomores or five sophomores in the junior. So we had the youngest team. And we put it out. When I tell you it was some gruesome, hard basketball play that day or those two days for that tournament, it was, I mean, like I felt like the state tournament was played in that tournament because you had four teams that were really just going at it. And um, my biggest memory was actually winning that thing as a, as a sophomore. But so as people might know, or might not know, you went to Middle Tennessee state, who's a, a powerhouse in the Sun Belt at women's basketball, even now. So what was that recruiting process like going from high school to Middle Tennessee state? Um, the process started out fun. You know, of course, you're just excited, like, okay, this is one of my goals, and people are coming, people are calling, and it started out fun. Well, back in that time, there was no texting. So there were letters, and there were uh, actual phone calls and sitting face-to-face. -face. And so as the time went on, it could get a little bit much of just sitting on the phone and listening to everybody, you know, give their pitch and everything. Uh, but... Once again, uh, my parents always said, you know, you're going to be polite to everybody. Even if you don't plan on going there, you're going to listen to everybody because who knows what could happen. You could get injured. And then this smaller school is like, hey, we still want you, you know, because 
So we entertained everybody and uh, it was a lot, uh, a lot of sitting on the phone, a lot. But at the same time, it was me realizing that I was actually going to attain one of my goals. And so it was exciting at the same time. So um, why Middle Tennessee State? Was there anything that made you just, hey, that's the school? Um, or for you, what was what was the final few weeks, months, or just the process of why you chose them over anyone else? Well, um, I'm a small town girl. I always knew that I did not want to be in a big city. I just enjoy getting from point A to point B in less than 20 minutes. And uh, Murfreesboro, Middle Tennessee is in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And at that time, Murfreesboro was just a slight upgrade of Monroe. Um, and so for me, that was perfect. Like the, the city was good. And uh, eventually when I went on my official visit, it's a very beautiful area of Tennessee. Uh, when I went on my official visit, well, you know, you have a hostess and she's hosting and they take you to the football game and they feed you good and they give you all your snacks. Well, later that night, one of the girls and my coach, she ne she doesn't know this even to this day. One of the girls on my visit, I guess, got into a confrontation or something with somebody else. They had went out and they were somewhere else. When I saw the way that those girls dropped everything was like, oh, no, we got to go. We got to go get we got to go to Sierra. I was like, oh, yeah. I want to be a part of this. I want I want a backing of about 14 girls behind me every time something happened. And so it was just, you know, to me, when you're that way off the court, the on the court part is easy. And so when I saw just how they were, it was so, it's a lot of girls that were from different uh, different states. And so they really were their own little family because they were there without family, you know, and, and they were really close. And when I saw that, I knew that for one, I wanted to be a part of something like that. And then two, I wanted to play immediately. Like I didn't want to have to sit at a powerhouse and sit for a year or two behind somebody. I wanted to actually play. So Middle Tennessee checked all the marks. I knew that I could come in as a freshman, have an impact. The city was small and they had, uh, the team was more like a family because that's what I was coming from. I was coming from a team in which we all were pretty much like family. So what was your favorite college memory on or off the court at Middle Tennessee State? Uh, college memory would have to be being an upset my first year there we were we upset North Carolina Michael Jordan North Carolina uh we come in you know 13 C we're bottom and um we were we had shoot around we shot around before them and so as we were closing out our shoot around we were stretching and they were walking on the floor and they were discussing, you know, loud enough so we could hear, you know, loud enough so we could hear. We don't even know why they came. Why they came? We were like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, so we kept it inside, talked amongst ourselves. Man, we went out and whooped North Carolina. There was never a time that game that we didn't think we were going to win it. And that was absolutely amazing for me. Like, I love the feeling. You know, we were being talked about all over the place. It was an upset. Uh, I'm snatching the ball from a girl, got put on you, and it was just steady. Like, I'm over top of her. I'm towering her with the ball in my hand, and she under me, all in distress. And that's exactly what it was. Like, we went out there, and we whooped their butts. Well, um, I didn't know. Let me read some of your accolades. I didn't know if you'd want to say any of these as your favorite moment. You were, I mean, <laughs> you were the first Middle Tennessee State women's player ever drafted. Um, you were a two-time Sunbelt Player of the Year, two-time Defensive Player of the Year. You were an AP All-American. You were two-time MVP of the Sunbelt Tournament, um, and you were a three-time All-Sunbelt Tournament team. I mean, you built some some accolades, and we even said <laughs> off camera, your senior year, you averaged uh, 25, 7, and 5. I mean, you were you were a bucket in college. So I didn't – you have probably too many to pick from, from your favorite college memories or just – how you played in college. But now as we get into your pro career, um, you know, like today's WNBA is a lot different even back in 2007, 2008, but even just the draft process for you, walk us through what was it like back then um, being drafted or even, you know, do they have combines back then? Like what was it like being drafted <laughs> in that process back, back in uh, 2007? Well, it was absolutely amazing um you're talking about a kid from this little town of Monroe getting the opportunity to go through this process because 
uh, you know, only a select few actually were able to go to the combine. Um, and so it was just for all these years, you have this dream. Oh, I want to play in college. Oh, I want to play in the WNBA. And when it actually came to me, it was almost like I was starstruck. So I'm in the combine with all these players that are on TV and from these big old schools. You know, I'm here from little old middle Tennessee, just this little mid major. And I was just taking, a, I mean, I was amongst the stars, as you could say, you know, and I was super appreciative of the opportunity, but it was, we played, we had workouts in front of the coaches. Uh, we played live ball five on five. Um, but the most interesting thing to me was, um, uh, they put us through classes. And so the classes entailed etiquette, like at the dinner table, because guess who didn't know what all the forks were for? Me. <laughs> so they, we learned what fork to use and how to behave at the dinner table. Um, we learned, or we talked about interviews, um, how to speak in them, you know, what to say, what's not okay to say. And we also took a, a financial class. And I thought that was extremely interesting. Like I, I said, I had previously not known about the different civilwares. And then I go over to Europe and then here they set every table. When I tell you every restaurant is going to set the table with all of the silverware, it is like that. And so to me, that opportunity was huge to be able to have that and um, go on. And then it's just being around those players, just being around girls who have a passion the same as you. Like they're going to put in the same amount of work as you and you have to go out there and compete against them. And plus it was uh, the final four for the NCAA was happening there where we held the, the draft party, they called it. And then just having the experience of getting my name called and walking up there, holding a jersey with the commissioner and getting a picture. It was surreal. Like I, I still to this day can't believe that was me. <laughs> so obviously you made your career out in overseas. Yeah, I think you played 10 plus years overseas. So what made you go overseas? Like what made you choose that route? Okay, so maybe you don't know this. A lot of WNBA players know this. The money is made in Europe. Um, the WNBA is still, you know, those women are still fighting for equal pay. They're still fighting. And it's been that way. So when I entered the WNBA, first year is make a set amount. Second year, make a second amount. Third year, fourth year. There's a set amount for every year. I think I can't remember at what point that you're able to negotiate a, a contract. So you're talking about, First year, maybe making 45000 and then it just kind of bumps up after that. Well, okay, it is three months, but you go overseas, and you're able to negotiate contracts. And so the teams overseas are getting Americans to score buckets, and they're going to pay for buckets. They want to win, and they're going to pay for buckets. So you're able to negotiate that contract, which could be double, triple, quadruple times. You know, you got players like Diana Taurasi making a million dollars when she was only making maybe 100000 here in the WNBA. So uh, overseas is where you actually make the money for women. Okay, well, there it is. There's the answer. <laughs> what, um, what were some of your favorite memories? You know, like I said, over, over 10 years, um, a lot of basketball was played. What were some of those memories that, that you made that you uh, keep, keep to today? Um, a non-basketball memory, which is cool because when you go over there, uh, you expect – well, I expected something totally different. But on those teams, learning the different cultures and just being immersed in something totally different, I had an open mind. I was willing to learn and learn their languages. And it was just fun. Like, they do a lot of barbecuing, um, a lot of just partying, as in not like going to the club, but just hanging out and just enjoying each other's company. That was tons of memories from that. But basketball memory, another underdog story. Those tend to be my favorite ones, but um, it was winning my fifth championship in Romania. The team, we were considered the underdog. Uh, we had maybe one player, me, that had any WNBA experience, and everybody else was rookies. So the other team that we were going against had maybe four or five WNBA players, some of the top European players. And so we were pegged. It's a five-game series. We were pegged to go out, you know, easy peasy, three and oh, they're done, win the championship. Uh, we weren't having it. I'm not used to losing. The girls next to me didn't want to lose. We go into their place. So it was two at their place because we were seated lower. It's two at their place, two at our place. And because they had the higher seat, if it goes to a tie, we go back to their place. Now, this was a team I had previously played on. So, of course, I have extra motivation because I played on this team and I do not want to lose to them. So we go into their place, take the first game, lose the second game. So it's 1-1. Come back to our 
place, win the first game, lose the second game. So what happened was is that we were playing about six players, 40-minute games over there. So we're trying to play back-to-back. It was back-to-back games. So I think we were just tired on the second day. But every first game, we took it. So when we came to this fifth game, we said, hey, ladies, this is it. Like, it's only one. So, you know, we good. Legs good. Body good. We good. We go in. First quarter, finish. Score was 16 to 4. We're down in their place with over 2,000 people in that gym. I said to myself, I said, Lord, Lord, no, not like this. I said, when I look at these girls' faces, it's going to tell it all. I said, if I look in their faces, when I come over to this bench and it's still fire in their eyes, I said, we're going to win this ball game. But if the heads are down and everybody's, you know, arguing on the bench about what should have been done, I was like, it's over. Like, there's no way we're coming back. When I walked to that bench, everybody was like, we got it. Ladies, like, let's go. Come on. We got I said, oh, it's a wrap. I don't know where it came from, but something like a lighted on onto me, like from the top of my head. It, if it was a movie, light would have been just shining. I went out there and I said, well, here we go. And we went on and won it. It was the most beautiful feeling to win on somebody else's court in front of, oh, they 2,000 plus fans. They had already had their fireworks ready and everything. It was the biggest one. Like, I absolutely I can't even tell you how excited and how long I celebrated that championship. Oh, I bet. I bet. So, so is there a, a difference, difference in play style from, from the U.S. to Europe? Yes. Uh, the biggest thing is power. Uh, I feel like Americans are powerful. We're power players. We'll take the hits. We'll give the hits. We take the contact. Uh, and we're athletic. Um, over there... To me, they're more finesse, and they play more with their minds. So, I mean, we could look at Luka Doncic right now. Right now, his body, you wouldn't say, oh, that's a basketball player. But Luka's mind for the game is absolutely tremendous. I mean, how are you, you know, doing what you're doing, and your body is nowhere in any type of real shape? But to me, it's that. It's that we're power players. We like the contact. And I kind of now, toward the end of my career, I can see the change. Like, I, I can hit when I need to hit, but I also learned how to, the best word I can describe it is slither. Like, I can slither a lot. Like, they can play real long and kind of loosey-goosey, and I learned to slither. And so um, it was just added. It's like a combination. You know, I think it was a good experience because it helped me elevate my game. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I, I feel like that's weird because I've always heard it different. I've always heard that Europeans are more physical. So to hear you say it's – Actually, we're more physical now. Um, now they foul a lot. Okay, and and it doesn't get called over there. But as far as like actually giving the hits and taking them, mm-mm. yeah, because <laughs> it's intriguing. Because you do see like uh, you see like Don- Luka Doncic and like Jokic who come over here and they average like ten assists a game, and it's because of this what mm-hmm. they can do with the basketball in their hands is is remarkable. But um, to wrap it up today, if there's anything you want to plug or just talk about that's going on in your life, maybe to talk about some of the things that are happening at Washita, um, you can do that now for us. Um, you know, since it's going to be younger kids watching, uh, just the biggest thing is that, you know, the sky's the limit, but only if you're willing to put in the work. And so just over the years, I've been here four years, and just what I'm seeing is that I'm not sure if they don't know that it requires work or where the disconnect came between, I have to actually do something to get something. But the biggest thing is that you, if you want to go, or you have a dream, or you have a goal, then you have to be willing to put in all the work for it and make the sacrifices. Uh, when I was in high school, I told my dad a couple of weeks ago, I said, I feel like my childhood was robbed, you know, because it was school, come home, put in extra work, get in the yard, do your ball handling. But at the end of the day, you know, it, I'm 38 now, and I look back and I say, I'm extremely happy I made those sacrifices because what I was able to attain and achieve and accomplish and experience has been beautiful. So that going out to the mall and and hanging out in the ball for two hours versus putting in some basketball work for two hours. So just for the younger kids, just stay hungry um, and you have to go work and don't be afraid of the work. You know, don't be afraid of it. Work's never killed anybody. Just work and be coachable. And that's the biggest thing. Believe in yourself always and just believe that you can Really, just believe that you can. Well, Chrissy, we thank you for being on today. And so, um, hey, you know, it's the 
end of the season for basketball and other sports are picking up. But um, mm -hmm. as we interview these people, we would love to see local support. So when basketball season comes around next year, go out to West Monroe, Washita, Neville, go out to these basketball games and support our, our young men and young women who okay. um, are just trying to be out there, right? I mean, trying to put in the work and make it to the state attorney and some of them hopefully making it to the next level, um, going to play college athletics. So let's let's support our 318 area Absolutely. code support support the next generation like like Chrissy and other athletes are doing. So hey, we thank you for watching today for Lucas, for Holden, and for Chrissy. We want to say thank you and peace yeah. out. See you.